500 million potatoes. That's how many were farmed in the Great Potato War that took two years. But with newer and better gear, how long would it take now? That's exactly what I want to find out. But to explain how I did it, let's start from one month ago. But at the time, I didn't even have a potato farm ready. I could have used the potato farm preset and not even have to build a farm, but I needed a lot of space for something I would build later. First, I emptied out an entire plot down to the bedrock and started building an extremely compact farm, which is only 14 blocks wide. The important part is that I build them in one row. This is because I used teleport paths at the end of each row to teleport me to the next one. But to get a lot of collection from farming, I also needed gear. Before it was pretty easy. The tier 3 hoe, the elephant pet, and the rancher boots, and for less than 100 million coins, you had the best setup. But after the garden update, tens of items got added, making the maximum fortune go from 600 to 1700. But those upgrades are very expensive, some even costing 500 million coins for 10 fortune. So before that, I started with buying a tier 3 potato hoe for 26 million coins. And after buying rancher boots and finding the perfect angle, I began farming with 287 fortune. Getting farming levels is very crucial because after every level, not only do you get 4 farming fortune from the level up itself, but your rancher boots also give you 1 additional fortune. At the start, I wasn't accepting any visitors, mainly because I was lazy. But since I was already making good money from farming and I didn't even have to set aside any of it for visitors, I began buying new gear very quickly. Because I was farming 30, well technically 31 now, I started buying crappie armor. With the garden update, there were also 4 farming armor sets added, melon being unlocked at farming level 25 and crappie at 30. With each upgrade of the set, you get more fortune as well as higher rarity. So because I put busting all over my face on my armor, crappie gave me 31 fortune more than melon armor. But then after going back to farming and doing 10 million potatoes, I realized something. It will take a long time. <laughs> Even with the best gear I could buy, I would still be ways of the maximum amount of fortune because of my farming level, visitors accepted, and garden milestones. To help myself not lose my mind as much, I started selling everything I had. Titanium Jewel 655, maxed out Divan Armor, and tens of perfect gemstones for a total of 500 million coins that then I spent on fortune upgrades. The first was Lotus Equipment. The full set gives you 20 base fortune, but it also has a perk that increases your fortune based on the amount of visitors you have accepted, but that perk works on every piece. So after accepting only 100 visitors, you already get 28 bonus fortune. But I also bought 4 borrowing spores and put rooted on the equipment for another 12 fortune. After that, I switched out my rabbit pet for an elephant with a yellow bandana as the pet item for it. Normally, the elephant only gives you 180 fortune, but because the bandana gives you 4 fortune for each garden level, I got 220 fortune from just the pet. And to upgrade my hoe, I bought a recombobulator, 5 farming for dummies books, and the new enchant, dedication. After farming a certain amount of crops in the garden, you will reach a crop milestone. This usually gives you a bit of farming and garden XP, but the dedication enchant increases your farming fortune based on how high your milestones are. So buying dedication free for 8 million coins gave me 23 fortune. After that, I also bought plots. I didn't need more farming space, but if you simply buy a plot, you will get free farming fortune and you don't even need to clean up the plot at all. The last plots are very expensive, going to upwards of 100 million coins for just one, but the starting plots are comically low, so for around 20 million coins, I unlocked 6 of them and got 18 fortune. And the last thing I bought was a farming talisman. Same way as there are armor sets, there are also talismans of the same type, but since those don't have level requirements, I bought the fermento artifact, which gave me 30 fortune for 54 million coins. With all those upgrades, I was able to get enough potatoes in a farming contest to get the silver medal, unlocking the requirement to use the turbo potato enchant for another 25 fortune. And the last thing I needed were the crop upgrades. After accepting a visitor, you will get copper. It can be spent on a number of items in the shop, but you can also use it to upgrade the farming fortune towards a specific crop. I only got to upgrade my fortune 5 times before I reached a garden level requirement, but with the 25 fortune I got, I was able to reach a thousand and farming fortune. While I was farming potatoes, I was also going for the number one collection in Netherworlds. 
but the only way I can farm 10,000 nether wards is if you subscribe. The last video we almost farmed 6 million nether wards, so let's see how much we can farm this time. After that, I begun hunting for visitors. Every few minutes in the garden, a visitor will appear. Which one appears is random, but to even have a chance to meet that visitor, you need to complete a quest related to him first. Some of the quests are very easy, only requiring you to click an NPC once, but to unlock some visitors, you need to spend 8 hours clicking them or require you to feed a hungry hiker for 5 in real life days. So after skipping the hard ones and unlocking some visitors, something happened. I think I really am onto something here. Jake says he can't walk, but I've seen him walk yesterday and he asks strangers to get him some animals, but these animals are nowhere to be found. After hours of farming, I finally reached farming level 35. With that, I met the requirement to use another upgrade of the farming armor, the squash armor. I quickly bought all the materials and upgraded my crappie armor to get another 40 fortune. Quickly after coming back to farming, I reached 20 million collection, but right after getting farming 36, this happened. I got macro checked by an admin, but after an unsuccessful attempt at stealing his soul, he let me go. After coming back to farming and getting a couple of visitors, Beth showed up again. I followed him today to where he brings all of the animals he catches. He goes down some weird cave. Unfortunately, I couldn't follow him any further as he almost noticed me, so I backed off for now. So after that, I farmed without any distractions, reaching new collection goals, crop milestones and farming levels. At 33 million collection, after selling everything I had and all the potatoes I had farmed to this point, I had 220 million coins. While Dedication 3 can be bought for less than 8 million coins, I bought Dedication 4 for 140 million coins. This is because it's an exclusive drop that you can rarely get from the librarian visitor. At the time, I was at the crop milestone 27, so I gained 54 fortune from that enchant alone. Another thing I bought was green farm. It is an extremely expensive equipment enchant with tier 1 costing 12 million coins, but I had 6000 copper, enough to buy 4 books, and I also bought 4 more books for 50 million coins. With that I combined everything and got green farm too on every equipment piece. The way this enchant works is that you get farming fortune based on how many unique visitors you have accepted. So all of those enchants gave me about 26 fortune, and with the remaining money I bought 4 recombobulators and recombobulated my squash armor to push me to 1150 fortune. Quickly after that I reached 36 million collection and got farming 40. I did it so quickly because even though I was using the elephant pet to farm with, every time I accepted visitors I switched my pet to the rabbit to increase my farming XP. When I finally got farming 40 however, I met the requirement to use the best farming armor in the game. I quickly bought all the materials for about 50 million coins and crafted the fermento armor. But farming armors don't only give you farming fortune, they will give you specific drops like croppies, squashes or fermentos if you are using the correct armor set while farming the correct crop. Potatoes normally give you croppies, but since I never used the melon armor, I didn't get any. However, the fermento armor ability also includes the ability of the previous armor sets. This meant that that not only did I get more fortune from upgrading the armor, I also got a new drop that I was getting from farming potatoes. After upgrading the armor, I reached 1200 fortune, which allowed me to finally get gold medals in the potato farming contests. After just a few of those, I claimed every medal I had and went to Anita. In the shop she offers, there are a bunch of things, but the only one I was interested in were the farming fortune upgrades, so I bought a total of 12 fortune from the shop. After some more farming, I reached taming 50 and 58 million collection. And then this happened. After accepting 394 visitors, I got the overgrown grass, an item that sells for more than 100 million coins. I could have sold it and be incredibly rich, but instead I applied it to my chestplate for 20 fortune. After that, I got farming 31, 32 and even garden 11, which all gave me 14 fortune. And quickly after that, Beth showed up for the third time. I managed to follow him into the cave today. He had a shovel with him 
and a note fell out of his pocket. The note reads 17544-470. I'm not really sure what these numbers mean yet, but I'm sure I will figure it out soon enough. Okay, sure, you cannot be more clear. So I took a break from farming to check out what was the whole Beth thing about. She clearly is suspicious of Jake, who is luring animals into a cave. So I quickly went to the mushroom desert, got lost, and finally found my way into the courts mentioned in the note. When I broke the block below me, I discovered Jake's secret laboratorium. He had animals and tabs and what, whatever this is. Anyway, I, I couldn't really do anything myself, so I went back and started farming waiting for Beth to visit me once more, so I can report it to her. After a few more hours of mining, I got together enough money so I can buy another overgrown grass and put mossy on my leggings. And after accepting a few more visitors, I saved up 15,000 copper. The original plan was to buy the castle barn skin, however that would never sell. So instead, I bought 10 green farm books and sold them to the bazaar. With the money I made, I bought the last overgrown grass and put mossy on my rancher boots. Also recombobulated all the lotus equipment I had to get an insane amount of 8 fortune for 50 million coins. At that point, I farmed so much that I already had a 110 million potato collection. And with all the upgrades, I reached more than 1300 fortune. But even though I bought so many things, there were still a bunch of upgrades left. So after another 10 hours of mining, I got enough money to buy the mossy fermento boots. I realized that fermento boots give you more fortune than rancher boots unless you have farming 60, which I didn't have. After that, I didn't have much upgrades I could buy. Most of the fortune I was still missing was from having low farming levels, crop milestones, or the amount of visitors I have accepted. So that's what I focused on. The only thing I did was farm, accept visitors, farm, accept visitors, farm, accept visitors. And it was like that until I accepted a thousand visitors and got a hundred and eighty two million collection. Quickly after that, Beth showed up again. When she visited me for the fourth time, I told her about the laboratorium I have discovered. You found what? A secret lab hidden inside the cave? We need to check it out together. I will meet you there. After that conversation, I quickly rushed to the secret Jake hideout only to find Beth waiting for me there. So you're telling me that Jake is doing horrible experiments with these animals? Jake has a lot of explaining to do. Beth, uh, what are you doing here? It's not, it's not what it looks like. You will pay for what you are doing to these poor animals. Animals, I can explain, I swear. Well, go on then. I, I don't know what you guys think I'm doing down here, but this is just my workshop. I'm just making toys for animals. We know that you are experimenting with animals down here. Do you think we aren't that naive? How do you explain this tank? Those are my plushies. I preserve them in jelly so that they stay fresh. I can prove it too. Here, take this. Hmm. I... I'm sorry. I yelled at you, Jake. I'm... I'm very sorry. Oh, that was a close one. Thank you for having my back. Anyway, I need to get back to my business. <laughs> I quickly went back to the loop of farming, accepting visitors, farming, accepting visitors. Okay, you get the point. And after accepting less than a hundred visitors, I got my second overgrown grass. After selling it, I was left with a lot of money. So I immediately spent all my copper and coins on buying green farm. And with it, I upgraded my equipment all the way from level two to level four. And after another like 15 hours of farming, can you tell I did a lot of farming yet? I upgraded two pieces to Grim Farm 5. But after that, instead of coming back to farming potatoes, I deleted my old farm and built a new farm. A farm with all the crops in the game. The mega farm. Wait, hold up! Why are you building a farm like that? Wasn't this video supposed to be about farming potatoes? Well, you see, farming 60 is the highest level of the farming skill, but to reach it, you need to get a gold medal in every crop's farming contest. That's so stupid! You will get like 40 fortune from that! It would be more efficient to just farm potatoes... Oh look, the farm is done! From there, when I was waiting for a contest to start, I was farming potatoes, even reaching 300 million collection. And when a contest did start, I would usually fail my first attempt and get silver and then get gold on the second attempt. In a single day, I was able to get golden carrots, melons, potatoes and pumpkin, allowing me to go up to farming 54. Bullshit! Even if you got the medals, you still need farming EXP to level up. There is no way you can get that much EXP in a single day. Oh, shut up! 
Ever since I reached farming 50, even though I couldn't level up, I was still getting farming XP. It got to the point that I had 700% of the experience needed to reach farming 51. So now the only thing that was stopping me from getting farming 60 were the gold medals. So that's what I focused on. Golden wheat, farming 55, golden cocoa beans, farming 56, golden mushrooms and farming 57. And right after that contest, the absolutely worst change in the game happened. Admins have disabled teleport paths in the garden. You might think I'm joking and over exaggerating, but at this point I have already farmed potatoes for over 150 hours. The only thing that made farming somewhat bearable is that I didn't need to pay any attention, with teleport paths switching rows for me. Now the farm that I spent more than two full days building was completely useless. I would have to build a completely new farm from scratch and get another 200 million collection with a way worse method. I was absolutely defeated. I went to bed hoping that by the time I came back, the change would be reverted and I could go back to farming like I used to. However, nothing like that happened. When I came back, teleport paths were still disabled, with people going back to old and inferior farms. I considered doing that myself, but I just couldn't let the old farm go. We are playing Minecraft, right? There must be another way. If they disable one item, then we just have to find another one that works, right? I was looking through every single block in Hypixel, testing interactions between blocks and thinking of new ideas, until I stumbled upon one item and found exactly what I was looking for. An item with a feature that no one knew about. Bets. Are you fucking joking? How the fuck did you survive? Go away! Okay, okay, I'm going, jeez. Um, anyway, bets have this feature that when you click them, you will set your spawn. If you then go and die, you will respond not where you clicked it from, but rather near the bed. You can set up a farm with an open bag so that every time you finish a row, you will fall down and die. If you set where you spawn at the beginning of row 1, you will keep farming the same row over and over. But what if you could be farming row 1 and then switch your spawn point to row 2? Then if you die, you will still be farming a fully grown row. I built a free white farm and placed a bed on the other side. Now when I walk down one row, I would hit the bed and then when I die, I would respawn on the other row, allowing me to do this. However, I was still farming 57, so I built a new cactus, cane, a netherworld farm, and after just a few attempts, I got gold in all of them, allowing me to reach farming 58, 59, and farming 60. Thanks to all those contests, I also got garden 15. Because I wasn't farming any other crops than potatoes, in a span of a single contest, I was able to get multiple crop milestones that each gave me more than 100 garden XP. With that, I used 15,000 copper to max out my crop upgrades and also got green farm 5 on my whole equipment. At that point, I was about 150 million collection away from my goal. This gave me enough motivation to grind so much that the admins thought I was macroing. At first, they turned me around, but I didn't even notice that for 20 seconds straight. They had to teleport me on top of the potatoes for me to actually notice. A few minutes later, I accepted 2,000 visitors, and to celebrate, I got gifted a green bandana. And then, the only thing that was left was farming. With every hour, I kept creeping closer to the goal. I was 100 million away, 50 million away, and 20 million away. When I was less than 10 million potatoes away, I literally started to tear up. This whole thing was a long journey, but even more than that, I started thinking about Technoblade. This video is obviously inspired by the Great Potato War, which is still one of the best series on YouTube I have ever watched. Those videos were the ones that got me into Skyblock, and by extension made this channel even possible. I couldn't just overtake his collection if ultimately all I'm doing is walking in his footsteps. That's why instead of getting 500 million collection, I stopped just before that, at 499 million, 99,000, and 99 potatoes. To make sure I never farm potatoes again, I'll give away this 500 million hoe to one person that subscribes in the next 7 days. And to answer the question, how long would the Great Potato War take now? 211 hours, 37 minutes, and 47 seconds.